we're going to do some examples of conformational analysis for some different molecules. As we do this, what we're going to do is draw both chair conformations and then pick the one that is lowest in energy. To do that, keep in mind what we talked about in terms of the substituents. So our goals are basically to get the most substituents in the equatorial position. And in some cases it won't be possible to get them all equatorial, but you want to try to get then the largest substituents equatorial. We're going to start by working through methyl cyclohexane together. And this is one you saw on the last slide as well, but I think it's worth drawing out. We have a methyl group on cyclohexane. It doesn't matter if you put it out or back because those are equivalent. Because if you were to flip it over, an out group would end up back. So let's start by numbering our ring. And this is arbitrary. You can use IUPAC numbering or just any old numbering as a bookkeeping tool. It doesn't have to be IUPAC for this process. Now let's draw two chairs. And draw the first chair conformation. I'll draw a set of equilibrium arrows, and then I'll draw the second chair conformation. Remember, in the second chair, slant your side bonds in the other direction. Okay, we have both chairs now. Then set yourself a reference point. I'm going to set carbon 1 as my reference point. And that can actually be any carbon on this chair. You can pick as carbon 1. I usually like to pick one of the corners, either down here or up here as carbon 1. Um, so let's just use the carbon on the top right as carbon 1. Then, from there, make sure your numbering matches the direction of the numbering in your ring. So here I numbered this ring clockwise. Make sure you number your chair clockwise as well. Then match that reference point to your second chair. When you do this ring flip, one flips down and becomes this carbon. Four flips up and becomes this carbon. So now what we have to do is make this highlighted carbon number one. And as long as you're consistent with your numbering and number clockwise, like we did in our first chair, you're going to get everything in the right position. So one, and we can do two, three, four ends up in the right place, five, and six. Now we need to put our substituent in on carbon one. Since this methyl group didn't have any three-dimensionality drawn, I didn't show it as a dash or a wedge, I can put that either up or down on carbon one. It doesn't matter if it's not given in the original structure. So let's say we put it up in this first structure. So the up group would be axial. After the ring flip, it becomes equatorial. These are the two conformations of methyl cyclohexane. Now in the case of this, you want to look at these two and decide which one is the lowest energy conformation. And in this case, that's going to be the one that has the methyl equatorial. So this one is the lowest energy and the most stable. So what I want you to do now is take a moment and I'm going to redraw this chair, but we're going to do something a little different, but keep it entirely correct. What I want you to do now is make this carbon right here, carbon one, and I want you to put 
the methyl group down instead of up. And draw both chair conformations and pick the one that's lowest in energy. And then um, you can come back and check your solution. We number clockwise again. If we decide to put the methyl down, it needs to be equatorial on this particular carbon. Then we draw the other chair conformation. Make sure you're consistent with where you put the carbons. Two flips up and is that carbon. Five flips down and is that carbon. So we number two, three, four, five, six, and one. So carbon one is right there now. After the ring flip, the methyl goes from equatorial to axial. It's still down. Comparing these two conformations, now our first conformation on the left has the methyl equatorial. It's the lowest energy. These are two different ways to draw the exact same thing. This conformation and this conformation are entirely equivalent. We have the methyl equatorial, the methyl equatorial. All you really need to do is flip this over and the methyl ends up going from down to up.